Horsepower and torque. You know, these are two very common terms when it comes to motorcycling and a measure to compare one motorcycle's engine's characteristics to the next. But what exactly is horsepower and torque and which is most important when it comes to street riding? This week, let's talk about it without getting too far into the weeds on engine dynamics. So first, let's define what torque and horsepower are. So torque is the measure of the rotational force that a motorcycle engine can produce. I used to have a Honda Trail 125. The Honda Trail had a small engine in it with low torque numbers. From a standstill, you could quickly and aggressively roll on the throttle and the engine would start making some noise. It'd start moving forward and about a half mile down the road, you'd be up to road speed. I currently have a Triumph Rocket 3 sitting right over here. If I was to perform the same riding technique on that Rocket 3, it'd probably yank my arms out of my sockets and I'd be over the speed limit within a second or two. The difference can be found in part to the torque numbers of the two motorcycles. The Honda Trail had a measly 7.4 foot-pounds of torque. Rocket 3 has 163 foot-pounds of torque. So when it comes to torque numbers, that's a huge difference, and it's demonstrated in each motorcycle with the power characteristics coming off the line. Horsepower is the measure of the engine's overall power output over time. So a motorcycle with higher horsepower numbers can generally be run and perform better at higher RPMs, and this affects the top speed of the motorcycle. Sport bikes generally have high horsepower numbers. That's why when you see a sport bike on the road and a rider who's really getting on it, that engine has that howl because it's operating at a high RPM level where the engine likes to be ridden at. Horsepower can be calculated from a motorcycle's torque number. The calculation is torque times the RPM, so whatever RPM you're in, divided by 5252. If you have those numbers and you do the formula, you'll figure out what the horsepower is at any given RPM range. A motorcycle engine produces different levels of torque and horsepower at different RPM levels. So when you see horsepower and torque numbers for a motorcycle, those are the highest levels that the engine can produce at a particular RPM. Torque and horsepower are also interrelated, so generally a motorcycle with high torque numbers is going to have decent horsepower as well, but the peak points may differ. So torque comes on quicker at lower RPMs, and then it either flattens out or begins to go away, while horsepower as the RPM goes up it reaches the maximum RPM for that engine. That's about the point where it's reaching maximum horsepower and then it begins to tail off after that. So torque comes on early in the rev range, horsepower later in the rev range. But in basic terms, a motorcycle with high torque numbers is quicker off the line. A motorcycle with high horsepower numbers can achieve a higher top speed but there are other factors that play into this as well. So when it comes to street riding, which is better, horsepower or torque? Well, the answer to that depends partly on what your goal and your preferences are, your riding preference, and requires finding a balance between the two that matches your riding style. So how do you find that right balance? For street motorcycles, a balance of torque and horsepower is ideal. Bikes that offer a good amount of torque for city rides and sufficient horsepower for highway cruising are typically well-rounded for various street scenarios. So let's look at some of the numbers of the three motorcycles I've got here in the garage. In looking at the horsepower and torque numbers, we'll discuss how the weight of the motorcycle affects these numbers as well. So I've got a Triumph Speedmaster. It's the lightest of my three motorcycles. It weighs 580 pounds. It's got 77 horsepower and 78 foot-pounds of torque. And I would consider it a fairly quick middleweight cruiser. It can do anything that you want out on the road up to and beyond what is legal. My Indian Challenger weighs a whole lot more at 831 pounds, but it also has 122 horsepower, which is considerably more, and 128 foot-pounds of torque. But because it weighs 251 pounds more than the Speedmaster, that weight slows the motorcycle down some, so it's not quite as much more powerful than you would think it would be because of the weight of the motorcycle, though I would say the Challenger is faster. So my Triumph Rocket 3, man, it's a beast of a motorcycle. It weighs in between the two other motorcycles we'd mentioned at 642 pounds, and I bet most of that is in the engine itself. 
but at 642 pounds, it's got 165 horsepower and a whopping 163 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see quickly from those numbers on the Rocket 3 that it's a fast motorcycle if you want it to be. So with the Google search, you can easily find the weight, horsepower, and torque of your motorcycle. But here are a few popular motorcycles that you can compare the numbers of my three bikes with some others that you may be familiar with. The preference for torque versus horsepower often comes down to personal riding style and the typical riding environment that you ride in. Urban riders might prefer torque for its low speed efficiency, while highway riders, and especially track riders, might favor a higher horsepower engine for high speed performance. Also, riders who travel frequently with a lot of luggage with, or with passengers will want a motorcycle with high torque numbers to be able to get off the line when you've got the added weight of luggage or an additional passenger. But for most riders who are on a mid-sized motorcycle or larger, just about any motorcycle will perform as needed out on the streets, whether it's on the city streets or the highway. How well it's going to perform at a given task is often related to the overall weight, horsepower, and torque numbers of the motorcycle. For me, where my primary riding is out on the street, I prefer a motorcycle that favors torque. You know, sport bikes and horsepower is okay, but to enjoy that motorcycle at its full potential, with those high horsepower numbers, you're often, or you're already well over the speed limit in order to get that motorcycle engine where it's going to perform at its best. While a motorcycle with higher torque numbers is going to provide its benefits at lower in the rev range, and that's going to help a rider stay within the speed limits with some awareness of what they're doing. The best way for you to understand these numbers is to look up the weight, horsepower, and torque of your motorcycle and compare it to others that you've ridden, bikes that are on this list, or other motorcycles that you may be interested in. The broader variation of motorcycles that you've ridden is going to help you understand how these numbers affect your riding preference and requirements for whatever street bike you choose to get next. While we can look at numbers and they do inform our decision making, nothing substitutes from an actual test ride. So look for demo days. Those are a great opportunity to test ride a lot of variation of motorcycles from a particular manufacturer or ask your dealership if they allow test rides. You know, some dealers don't want to have their new motorcycles test ridden, but they're more likely to allow test rides on a used motorcycle or something that's already got some miles on it. You can also rent motorcycles for a day if it's a motorcycle that you're particularly interested in. Just do a search for motorcycle rentals in your area. You can then use the actual test ride. You can look at the weight, horsepower, and torque numbers, and you can have a better understanding of the type of engine characteristics of the motorcycle that you prefer to ride and make an informed decision based on your experience and the numbers. Till next week, guys, this is Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road. See that video on the left of the screen? YouTube hand-selected that video just for you. Click on it. Find out why YouTube wants you to watch this MC Rider video.